Hello Cancer friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Cancer September 2021 Astrology Must Knows. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. This is your one-stop place where you can see all of the very many free goodies that I make for you each month to make the most of the astrological potentials and to claim your best life. If you would like to be an astrologer as your trade, or if you would like to learn astrology in a deeper way to help yourself and your family and friends, you will love my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. If you think I put a lot into my free videos, you should see what goes on in that course. You can see it at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. I also have free courses at my school at that site. So what's going on this month? We've got two admin notes for Cancers to make the most of this must know video. The first is this is for you if Cancer is your sun sign. It's also for you if Cancer is your rising or your moon, or if you go deeper into your chart and you have Mercury or Venus or Mars as your Cancer placement. Each of those placements is a different level of our astrological truth. People are complicated, the universe is complicated, astrology is complicated, so we're always seeing that there are more and more layers and the deeper you wanna go, astrology is there for you to do that. So this is for you regardless of your cancer placement. The next important must know is that if you are late degree cancer, so basically around like a late, late degree cancer, so basically around July 15th through the rest of the sign or like 24 or 25 degrees through the rest of the sign, I also highly recommend that you watch my um, watch or listen to my reports for Leo because you late degree friends, you're going to have pieces of the um, cancer report that are true for you, but you're also going to pick up additional pieces in the Leo report. Okay, so the first major must know is that we have a major change of the tides. Astrological tides are so important to track because they dictate so much of our experience. You can liken the energy of personal planets being direct that being Mercury, Venus, and Mars, to like a time when the tide is going out. If you set something afloat on the water, the tide will naturally take it out to sea. If you're trying to go out to sea and you won't have to paddle as much if you're going in on an out tide, right? Or going out on an out tide. And that's how the planets are from basically around July 7th until early September here. So around September 7th, the first week of September, we, you know, this, this time frame. July 7th to September 7th or so, is this time to put your boats out, put your, you know, do your launches, get your things out into the world, make your big decisions, you have more clarity for contracts and plans and things like that. But once it's September 7th, every day that we get deeper into September, and for most of October this is true as well, this is the time when the tides are coming in. And when the tides are coming in, if you try to put something out to go out to sea, it's just gonna come back towards you again. So if you just kind of imagine that, if it's like something you're agreeing to, something that you're trying to plan, something that you're trying to you know, put out there and have not you know, be noticed or to, to get attention, all of those tides are not going out, they're coming in. And that is going to be true for the, 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 dominant, the predominance of September and October. So, it's a very, very important must know. And what also comes with this Mercury retrograde as we are in at this time, there are challenges that come with it, which we'll talk more about, but there are also opportunities. I think that we don't talk a lot about the really great opportunities that come. And so I'm going to list some of those for you as major must knows. Okay, so one of the things I love most that you can have happen this month and even into October is free flow with no agenda. The less you schedule yourself, the more peace and ease you're going to have because plans that you make are likely to change or be called into question. So if you have to make a plan in September, October, major must know, write it in pencil and tell anyone who you're committing to do something with, hey, I can't commit to this for sure, let's put it down in pencil and then if you need your out, you have your out. You want to be able to have outs. The next thing is you want to be able to schedule as few things as possible because one of the magical things that happens in the retrograde time that September will be full of is last minute magic. Like someone says, hey, I got tickets to this concert. Do you want to come? Well, if you're overscheduled and you have all this stuff and you have to move things around, it might not be as easy for you to say yes to the things that come to you. But if you leave everything open and tentative, then as this last minute magic comes in, a a last minute chance to take a trip, you know, so any kind of thing like that, you will be ready for it if you're not as scheduled. And if you know that people are likely to cancel plans on you, so try not to have a high expectation of someone saying they're going to do something or be somewhere. 
and the same thing for you, okay? So if you know these things going into it, you're going to have a much more joy and ease and flow and you can really enjoy this time. The stress in Mercury retrograde comes from trying to force something that isn't going out to see, it's coming back in, right? So if you just notice that that's happening and you say, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. This time, September is a time when things, to deal with things closer to you. And while it is true that certain things start to break down, you know, your washer breaks, your car needs assistance with something, you know, it's like a time to not be trying to do things out there and planning and strategizing. It's just like, you know, do repairs, do take care of things that have to be dealt with, to clear up your um, to-do pile, all of that kind of stuff closer to home. And it's also great for reorganizing and clearing and cleaning. Writing is especially favored, but other hobbies and anything that's, you know, in the expression zone is really great, especially if it's an old project or if it's just something whimsical that you're not trying to turn into anything, you know, or trying to make be a certain thing or be a big launch. Just things basically that are low stakes, short term or um, flexible. Okay, so if it satisfies, if what you're going to do satisfies the short term, flexible, or low stakes, then it's, it's a green light. And it only has to be one of them. So like, let's say for instance, you're going to move, okay? Well, a move could be a long term thing, but if you get into a month to month lease, then it satisfies the short term so that you know, and it also flexible, you see? So the more you can work, you know, at least one of those factors in, the better. This is an amazing time for studying, learning, education, going back to something you were interested in before, um, something you've always wanted to do. And again, with education programs, if it's low stakes, meaning you have the money, so it doesn't matter either way, or it's short term, or if it's not short term, or even if it's a stretch for you financially, as long as it's flexible, like go at your own pace, you know, where you can do the work when you feel like it and then leave it for however long you want, those kind of things work really well in this time, relaxed and laid back. It's fantastic for reconnecting with friends and family. And if you have a nudge to talk to somebody or contact somebody, either an acquaintance, someone gave you a business card for something, this is a great time to go back to old contacts. If you're trying to look to get something done, people from your past might have important keys for you. One of my favorite things about this time is it really does bring us into the right here and right now, because like I said, it doesn't favor trying to schedule or plan. Even people think that if they're planning something in the future that when Mercury isn't in retrograde for that time frame, but they're in Mercury retrograde when they're planning it, that it's okay. It's better to avoid future planning when Mercury's in retrograde, not just planning for a time when Mercury's in retrograde. And the biggest thing to know is that you want to leave your schedule light to make room for the last minute magic, okay? You're going to have a lot of fun possibilities come in if you can do that. Okay, another major must know is that we are having another month's rest in between the eclipse cycle. We have about six months of the year in an eclipse season. And eclipse season, it just think back to May, June and earlier part of July, is really intense, big changes. You, know, you feel like your finger's stuck in a light socket. You know, you're just like anxious and you think people around you are having changes. People are going through stuff, you're going through stuff. And so August and September are months where we're in between the eclipse seasons because October, November, and December bring us back into eclipse season. So just no major must know, this is a month where you sort of have a rest still where you can integrate the changes that happened from the previous eclipse cycle before we step into this very monumental eclipse cycle because we're wrapping up the Sagittarius Gemini eclipse cycle October through December. And that is the cycle that started around the same time that the whole COVID story started. So I'm hoping that certain things get wrapped up with that cycle. And then now we're starting a new eclipse cycle, which will be the Taurus Scorpio cycle. Okay, so you've got a, a month's rest here before that really starts brewing. Okay, so I've had a lot of requests for bringing back the visuals for the charts, and I don't usually have time for it, I've been very busy, but I, I have a little bit more time while I'm recording this that I'm going to include the visuals this month. I can't commit to doing it all the time, but I will do it whenever I can, and I can tell you that. All right, so let's take a peek at the Cancer charts and talk about some more must-knows here. Now, right now, I'm using the early degree chart Early degree is basically June born cancer placements or zero to nine degrees. But everything that I'm going to say as far as things to know 
are going to be true for all of you unless I otherwise differentiate out. If there's something different for a July born cancer or for you know someone in the late degrees, especially you know designation, I will show you the different charts and I will show you what's different and why. Okay, but otherwise just assume that everything is for everybody. So the first must know here is that we still have a lot of energy in Virgo. Virgo does make a nice aspect with the Cancer placement. So whenever we have planets in Virgo, it's really getting Cancer um, people in a more gentle way to get some stuff done, to make some decisions, to be a little bit more um, organized, to get some systems and structures together, to get some plans, and you know, even if you're not implementing them, just sort of be um, getting your life pulled together in a way that feels good to you. And because it's a nice angle, that's not you know, usually it's, like I said, it's like a gentle sort of reminder or you have tools that come in that help you to do that. And, and this is true for all cancer placements. Something else that is going on is that we've got movement in these Libra placements. Now that does make a little bit more of a challenging angle for you all, but it's nothing to fear. It's just an angle that puts some pressure. So your relationships are putting pressure on you, basically. The energy of Libra is relationships. So relationships will be front and center at this time, September into October, and you will be feeling pressures from your relationships. You will be feeling like you have to make decisions or things are coming back from the past that are like unresolved from relationships that you have to deal with. And you'll be feeling it, but you'll be able to come to some positive solutions. And I'm going to layer in some more later that will show that you can have some blessings and breakthroughs in this area. Okay, something else that is a must know is that these this, these houses here, the third and fourth houses, are full and active for all cancer placements. So you can see this is the early chart. Look at the third and fourth house for the middle degree, which is basically around July 1st through 10th, or 10 to 19 degrees, depending on what your placement you're watching for. Then look at the late degree placement, even you all, third and fourth, for some different reasons at different times, but the third and fourth houses are very much accentuated no matter where you are in the spectrum. And the late degree friends are basically around July 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees, okay? So what does it mean to have an active third and fourth house? The third house has to do with your mobility. So it increases the odds that August, September into October might be a time of travel. And if it's not like travel for vacation, it could be travel for business, or it could, ju it could be further away, or it could just be a busyness where you find yourself running around town. Like you have things going on with your kids and you have to start taking them to their activities. And you know, you think that, okay, that's happening because school's back in, but it's really happening because your third house is lit up and those are the types of things that are going to be coming up for you. All right, so you're running around and talking to a lot of people, either virtually or in person. Communication is very key at this time, and because Mercury is going to retrograde, communication patterns from the past, people who you've had a lot of difficulty feeling understood by or understanding, you'll have opportunities to be able to be heard more, and you'll have opportunities to hear other people better. And this is a wonderful time to try to look into communication help, like books that are based on communication. I love one called nonviolent communication, which really helps us to phrase things in a way that helps them to be better heard. So any efforts that you put towards those kind of things now will go very far. And if you happen to be a person who's a presenter or you want to be, or you want to you know, do videos or podcasts or something in the communication lines or writing, those sectors are super lit up for um, everybody from the Mercury retrograde, but especially for cancer because of these this third house energy. Also, you have um, things involving your relatives, all of your relatives, because the third and fourth house cover all of your relatives between the two of them. So you've got aunts and uncles and cousins and, you know, everybody, your kids and everybody. So between that, you've got a lot of famil fam familial relations and things coming into the forefront. The fourth house is uh, really focused on home and family, your ancestry, if you're trying to find you know, relatives or figure out some genetic things for your health, anything having to do with homes and housing and you know, figuring out things about your house. Like if you have, this is a great time for minor repairs. If you have to do major work, November is better for that because 
Um, and you've got a window before Venus goes into retrograde, which we'll talk about. But there is sort of like at the end of October, beginning of November, a little window between the retrogrades that if you've got to do some big house things, the moves, the you know um, purchases, all of that will be more clear. But you definitely will see a lot of activity in the housing sector, and that is going to be very no notable. Also, if you're trying to work from home or if you do work from home, this sector is very lively at this time. Okay, so now we're going to add in some more layers. Everything in life is layers. There's like this dimension of what's going on, then you add to it, then this is going on, then you add to it, then this is going on, and all those things are happening at the same time. Okay, so like let's say you're wearing a red hat. Okay, that's going on. And then you add red gloves. Now that's going on. They're going on at the same time. Then you add red shoes, and that's going on at the same time. So like every layer you add, there's something that's happening at the same time that's equally true. And so we're going to add some layers in. We've already talked about the planets in the signs. We've talked about the houses or fields of experience that they're in. Now let's talk about some angles that they're making to other planets. So what we've got going on in this month is beautiful trines between these planets uh, that we spoke about, the Sun, basically Mars, Mercury, Venus, and they're going to make the most favorable aspect in all of astrology, the trine, which I like to call uh, um, astro kisses, with your um, Outer planets here, so Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, all of those heavy hitters are going to be kissing and connecting with these, um, these planets. So that means that any challenges you have in the third and fourth house, all the stuff we just talked about, there's a really good chance that blessings will come from whatever work you put into trying to resolve them. And one thing that's true for all early, middle, and late degree placements is that the seventh and eighth houses are accentuated for you all. Okay, so you see that's the early chart, that's the middle chart. Here we've got everything here. Here's the late chart, we've got everything here. All right, so that means that there's going to be a very strong relationship between your relationships. We already talked about the fact that Libra's bringing that in, but now in a bigger way. So things gelling into place in a long-term way in your relationships, big endings, big beginnings, you know, anything having to do with clients or collaborations or, you know, networking, anything like that. And the eighth house is accentuated for everybody, all of the cancers too. So that means that the energies of resources, like your relationships with resources, you and the mortgage company, you and the bank for something else, you and the credit card, you and the government, you know, taxes and government assistance and, you know, angel lending we put in there, anything, sweepstakes, inheritances, uh, family, like estate planning, uh, investments, all of those kind of things are very strongly um, highlighted at this time. Now, while it's not, doesn't have the best energy for this time of trying to make high stakes, long-term, inflexible things. We talked about what the checklist was. Okay, by the way, in my book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe, which you can get everywhere, I go into all of the retrograde Mercury, Venus, and Mars in depth, and I give you checklists of how to try to make decisions during that time. So with the Mercury retrograde time, I'm giving you some snippets. If it's low stakes or short-term or flexible, those or they satisfy the requirements to to have things flow well but if it's high stakes long term or inflexible then you have to really take it you know really feel it out and these planets are wanting especially saturn is wanting to bring some long-term things in for you so it increases the odds that some long-term things will gel from work you did before like you did something, you're working on something, and then it comes through at this time. Maybe you made an investment a while ago and it, you know, it opens up at this time or something like that. But in any case, those sectors are accentuated. For all of 2021, Jupiter is working the eighth house of the Cancer placements, okay? So definitely watch my very in-depth video, Jupiter in Aquarius for Cancer. And you can search for that organically by title, Jupiter in Aquarius for Cancer, or you can go to my home page on YouTube and look at my Jupiter playlist and watch the video there because that will give you a lot of details into what Jupiter is doing in the eighth house. And it's pretty exciting because the eighth house is sweepstakes and massive amounts of money and Jupiter's the great expander. And so, you know, the odds of having fortune come to you or, you know, healing money issues, changing money paradigms that allow you to have breakthroughs and different financial experiences are much more increased. Finding money. I remember times when I've had Jupiter in the eighth house before I understood about astrology. I was like winning stuff like crazy, just like little 
little things like things when I had a corporate job I would always win like the little corporate drawings for stuff and devices and things that I had at the time and then when I started studying astrology I realized that Jupiter was transiting the eighth house at the time that I won all of those things so you're definitely more receptive to getting um, money and resources and support financially at that time but in the video I go into a lot more implications of Jupiter in the eighth house and it is important to know that those of you who are in the late degree spectrum you are also still having some energy of Jupiter in the seventh house so for the late degree placement so meaning like July 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees I also suggest that you watch my Jupiter and Aquarius for Leo video because your chart also has some elements of the Leo chart and Jupiter is also working that seventh house for you and it will take longer for you to your influence in the eighth house is going to stretch out further than those people who are in the earlier designations a couple of other must knows before we close here one is that we do have way more salty aspects than we do sweet ones and if you want a full write-up of all of the notable aspects what they are the dates what you can expect from them the sweet and salty date list and other information about the month delivered into your inbox one month early, then you will definitely want to sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I only send out a few very content-rich emails a month that will help to equip you to go deeper into your study and use of the stars. And so anyway, there, this month we've got a lot of salty aspects and it doesn't have to be something to fear. It just means there are going to be um, like speed bumps. You're trying to go along and then the speed bump, trying to go along a speed bump. But if you know that's going to happen, you can just go slowly and enjoy the wee ride. Okay, you're popping up, wee ride. Okay, so it's again, it's the perspective and the understanding. If you didn't know it was coming, when you would keep hitting speed bumps, you'd be like, what the heck, this is annoying, you're jostled. You know, but if you know that it's coming, then you can more easily enjoy it and navigate and, and look at the blessings from it. We talked about the um, challenges that can come with Mercury retrograde, but I do also have some resources. You can search for maximizing personal planet retrogrades and my name, Annie Botticelli, and you'll find my blog on the topic. So I go into more ways that you can make the most of the retrograde. And you can also search for Annie Botticelli Mercury retrograde, and I have a Mercury retrograde video that can help you to navigate around the challenges that come at this time. Okay, so I've given you lots of information about the energies at work and play this month to help you make the most of the potentials. If you'd like even more information, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. That is the interface for all of the free goodies that I make for you each month. Also, if you would like to be an astrologer as your profession, if you're a homeschooling parent, if you want to stay working from home, if you want to make your own hours and earn money from your love for astrology, I can help you do that. Check out my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. This course is great for you even if you don't want to do this work as your profession, if you just want to help yourself, your own self-development, help your family and friends, you can learn everything you need to know in that course at loomlife.com. Also, I have lots of free courses at that site so you can check out all of more free goodies there. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye!